going to go through actually four sections because they're not very long. So chapter one, introduction to human anatomy. A little bit of history. Early students years ago when they took anatomy dealt more with illnesses, injuries, where now we're getting more into what are the different parts, what does everything do, much more in depth. Early healers. I was teased when I was young. I remember my mom taking me to a toe tickler. Have you ever heard of such a thing? No. And he worked on your, like if I had strep throat, he, she would take me to this man and he would work on your feet. And you do see things yet where there are certain spots in your feet that are with nerves or connected to other parts of your body. And it worked. It's, you know, people look at me like, that's the strangest thing I've ever heard, but I remember that it did work. Uh, techniques, observations, experiments have gotten a lot better. Obviously, with your computers, everything that we do has become more developed. D is the bad part of anatomy and physiology. A lot of the words are still, still come from Greek and Latin. One of the hardest parts about anatomy and physiology is just the big words. So that's something that you'll have to study. Scientific method, we've done that for years. I'm not going to talk about that. So that was section one. Two things that we're going to look at. Anatomy deals with structure of something. So anatomy of the skeletal system, we're going to look at the bones. What is the outer layer? What is the inner layer? Uh, what's the name of this bone? So anatomy deals with the structures, the names of the parts, the labeling. Physiology is how they work. So once we learn that the bone has an outer covering, the physiology is that outer covering protects. Its job is to protect the bone. It's tough, it's strong. So they very much are closely interrelated. They're going to go together. They work together. It is built this way so it can do that function. Uh, anatomists rely on observation, dissection. So we'll dissect the heart for sure, uh, the eyeball. At Sanborn for sure, we'll do the cats. And that's how we learn things. Um, cadavers, when we go to the cadavers, that's one of the most interesting field trips I ever take with students because you get to actually see something. When we do online activities, you know, you can find where something is at, like labeling, here's where the kidney is, here's where the liver is, but it's not the same as actually seeing the real organ. So it's more common anymore to find new information about physiology because anatomy, we, they consider that we found a lot of that already, especially in the human. We know, we know that cancer is there, the physiology, how to fix it, we haven't got there yet. Okay, section three, organization. To me, this goes back to a little bit of chemistry and biology. So the human body is the sum of all its parts. The better put together it is, the better it's going to work. So we're going to start at the smallest, and then we're going to go larger from there. So chemicals, atoms are going to be the smallest. Uh, two or more atoms, here's your chemistry, put together, make a molecule. Macro means large, so macromolecules are big molecules. Probably change are chains of molecules. Your sugars, your proteins are macromolecules. Then we go to organelles, which were part of your biology, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, things like that. So organelles are larger, we keep getting larger and they have a specific function. Then we go to cells, the basic unit of living things, different types of cells. Cells build tissues. 
Tissues are a group of cells that work together. A group of tissues forms organs. A group of organs forms systems. Put it all together, we have an organism. So if I look at the human body, a human is an organism. If I look at the muscular system, that's one of the organ systems. Uh, the biceps muscle would be an organ in the muscular system. Uh, muscle tissue, when you eat a steak and you pry apart the tissue, that would make up that muscle. And the cells, actually cells in a muscle system are called fibers, but the cells would be the smallest part of that. And then there's a picture. And I know I'll have this on one of, probably on sequencing. So this just shows the picture of how those levels go. So here they're looking more at the digestive system. Here's the stomach. Here's the tissue that lines the stomach. And there's a cell that's inside of the stomach. And last section for today. Uh, there are certain characteristics that are shared by all living organisms. So biology, you've probably gone over this. All living organisms, especially in the animals, movement. I can change my position. An insect can change its position. So all animals have movement. Plants actually have movement of like water and food inside of them. Uh, responsiveness, we'll talk quite a bit about this next time. Negative feedback, positive feedback. When it's cold out, how do you respond to it? When you're dehydrated, how do you respond to it? So responsiveness can be internal or it can be external, inside or outside. Growth, increase in size. Even though I'm old, my bones still grow. Your bones replace other cells. Um, heart, your cells die and have to be replaced. You go through a growth spurt, but even after you've become an adult, you still have growth in your body. Uh, reproduction, producing new organisms or reproduction of cells where you have to reproduce cells to replace the old ones that have died. Respiration, breathing, taking in oxygen, getting rid of carbon dioxide. Plants do have respiration along with photosynthesis. Digest, all animals can digest, break down food into simpler forms. Obviously what you take in is broken down into stuff that your body can use, and then waste is gotten rid of. These ones might be more new terms. Absorption, substances have to go through a membrane. So that is why your food has to be digested. A chunk of potato cannot go through your blood vessels. But a small molecule or macromolecule of sugar can go through um, your blood or go through your blood vessels. Circulation, mostly blood here, which is made up of a lot of water. Movement of uh, nutrients, waste, things like that within body fluids, mostly blood and water. Assimilation, this one might be new. Assimilation is changing nutrients into chemically different forms. And this chapter, we won't talk so much about that. But, for example, when we get into your circulatory system, there are, there's oxyhemoglobin, there's deoxyhemoglobin. So it changes uh, the nutrients into something different. Excretion is getting rid of waste. Your cells excrete waste, your skins excrete waste, your digestive system excretes waste. So excretion is another example. Taken together, these 10 characteristics make metabolism. 
When I say metabolism, what do you guys think of? Like when you eat food, how fast it breaks down. All right. When we talk about metabolism, we think of food. How fast? Oh, that skinny person has a high metabolism. Mm, I have a lower metabolism than I used to when I was younger. And that's true. It does relate to how you break down calories. But what metabolism actually comes from is your body is constantly getting energy. It's releasing energy and it's using energy to breathe, to have your organs function, to move food in your body, for your blood cells to move. So inside your body, all these activities are taking place. The sum of that activity is what makes your metabolism. So a lot of times you'll notice, you know, a lot of people that have higher metabolism usually are younger. Sometimes it deals with growth. But their body then is using a lot of energy. Or you think of hyper people that have high metabolism. If you are a hyper, on-the-ball, go-getter type of person, your metabolism is going to be higher just because you move more, you talk faster, you use more energy than others. And that is why in, I don't want to say dieting, but in, kind of, higher metabolism, when you exercise, your metabolism goes up because you are using more energy. When you sit on the couch and watch TV, it doesn't require a lot of energy, so your metabolism at that point will drop down. And that's where I'm going to stop. Questions? Nothing yet? A few new terms, but not a lot. Some of, it's re some of it should be reviewed from biology and chemistry. So we'll stop there for today and start with 1.5 next time.